What's up you guys, Simon here. Today in this video, I am gonna go ahead and go into whether college is worth it to be successful in life and in business. Recently, my wife and I watched Operation Varsity Blues, the college admission scandal where famous celebrities, entrepreneurs, CEOs, lawyers, etc., paid an individual to get their children in to universities such as Stanford, Harvard, through the side door, as they call it, or the back door, um, as a bribe to show that these kids were actually on some athletic teams. There was a five foot five men's basketball player, a high school cheerleader who was made to look like a lacrosse player. You've never had an issue with this. Like some article comes out that the, the polo team is selling seats into the school for 250 grand. Well, no, because she's a water polo player but she's not. So as an individual that started several businesses that fell short of going to college, this might be an interesting video for some of you that are young and feel pressured to go to school or maybe you'll relive the, the college days if you're older. Before I get into this video, go ahead, hit the like button for me and subscribe to my channel. Let's get into this. All of our friends are only talking about one thing and it's this story. An FBI investigation called Operation Varsity Blues. USC. UCLA and Rick Singer, the mastermind behind the entire operation. Is there any risk that this thing blows up in my face? Okay, guys, so my college diploma actually sits almost right here. This is my first hundred thousand dollar car that I purchased with my own money. This was in my early 20s. This was a Mercedes 2008 S550. Um, it was fully loaded it had a screen in the dash that had a camera things didn't didn't exist like this back then and it was over a hundred thousand dollars and that was my first hundred thousand dollar car in 2008 so that makes it what 13 years ago i was 24. another thing i got and i'll flash it on the screen here is i applied when i was younger to the haas school of business now to give you a little bit of background i graduated high school with a 1.0 mr dorfman Hello. 0.2. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Mr. Hoover, president of Delta House, 1.6, four C's and an F. A fine example you set. Mr. Blue... Mr. Blutarski. 0.2. Zero. Okay, I didn't like high school. I didn't like what was happening. My parents were never pushing me to uh, do well in school or uh, made that a priority. They were always working, trying to put food on the table or at least get by and pay the rent. So I would have a roof and uh, over my head and they had a roof over their head. So education, unlike a lot of people nowadays, it was not a priority in my family. My sister, she did really well in high school and ended up not really doing college either. She got married or met someone she loved and so forth. So she didn't go either. Um, so overall, we were never really uh, an education type family. And once I graduated high school with a 1.0, and, it, and I have some funny stories there where in math class, although I was smart in math, I showed up to class one day because someone pranked me and told me that we were going to watch a movie in class. When I showed up with my friend to that class, it turned out to be a test. So as soon as I knew there was a test, I was pissed at him and I got up and left and told the teacher I'm failing it anyway. Anyway, I passed with a D in that class and all D's. That was a 1.0. But when I got to community college, I decided that I need to turn my life around. I couldn't work these nine to five jobs that were paying me nothing. And I really try to push uh, to get really good grades and prove to myself that I can do that. So it was a priority for me. And once something becomes a priority for you, you do better at it versus someone else's goal or dream. So I ended up getting a 4.0 in community college. I had an A in calculus and all classes that I've taken in college, I had A's in psychology, which is a really fun topic for me. So after excelling in community college, I applied and I had my own business at that time. I applied to the Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Now this business school 
is ranked among the top 10 in the country. I was so excited that out of thousands of students out there, they selected me to be one of the 150 to be considered to go to the Haas School of Business. Now, the Haas School of Business is from Levi Strauss. He funded this or they kind of named it after him. So this business school was exceptional. I made it past the first round. I didn't have any guidance with my essay for the second round essay. So I did a horrible job. I actually witnessed something that affected me and I wrote about that and had nothing to do with business. So they passed on me. I was sad. I mean, I was so upset that day. I remember being parked in a car, uh, literally crying, um, worrying that you know I've worked so hard for three, four years at community college, got excellent grades, and I got denied this school uh, by uh, not being you know one of the 90 students out of 150 selected they only take like 90 at the end of the year which is incredible for a bachelor program that's how competitive it is at Haas and some of you that have went to the school or uh, read about the school know that this is the top of the line business school and I'm sure if I had went to it I would have made a lot of money or had really good relationships or partnerships with individuals that are at that scale of um, top quality top talent to do something with their life so that's a benefit of college you know you could go to Stanford and meet that next individual that could have a great idea and has the skill set to build a really big company. You're not going to meet that guy locally at your Best Buy or wherever you're at. I wrote the Berkeley School of Business and at the time their dean was Tom Campbell. Tom Campbell was an advisor to government, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger of California. And uh, Tom Campbell personally wrote me back this handwritten letter, which I framed as my second diploma. Although it's not hanging, it's here uh, in this cheap $9 frame. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Tom, but the letter was really nice. He did not overturn the decision. He literally said that I'm going to be successful in life because he sees my determination. On top of that, I also, and I need to find it, or I may call USC, I got accepted to USC's Marshall School of Business. That was also a top 10 school of business. But the problem with that was the cost per year. At the time it was 40,000 now with grants and low income because my parents didn't make that much money. I was able to get in at 33,000. At the same time I had my business. My father and I had a conversation. I said, dad, are you gonna have any opportunity for me to attend USC, I'll pay you back in the future and so forth. And he said, no, I don't have the money. At the time I was making some money, I was making five, six, seven grand a month, whatever it may be. And for a 20 some year old in that time period, it's a lot of money. So I decided to pass on USC as well. Although I was legitimately accepted through the front door, not the back door, or side door or anything else. It's amazing guys, the amount of pressure that's put on nowadays on college kids or kids in high school to get to college. And I think parents need to cool it and slow down. My two daughters, I would love for them to go to college, uh, Stanford or one of those schools that's near me so I could see and hopefully get as much time with them as possible. Uh, but if they don't, I, it's okay. It's not something that is worth your life or something that's worth the stress or the pressure and kids don't understand that because parents are always pushing it. Parents were caught and sentenced and had to pay enormous fines for this amount of trouble that they got themselves and their children into. I think there's a famous YouTuber, um, her, her name is Olivia Jade. She had about 1.5 to 2 million followers. Her mom was Lori Loughlin who's very beautiful. They're both beautiful women and she got dragged in by her mom's poor decisions. It doesn't seem like a big thing when it's happening, but it is a, you know, a big thing. And, and if the government wants to stop it, they will. So universities are catering to very wealthy families. That's where they make the bulk of their money. It's people that could afford to pay for it. It's my families. Want a guarantee. Universities do not make much money giving free scholarships or at all. Is college worth it? So here's my take on college, guys. You got to know what you're getting into. Universities, you probably grow as an individual. For someone like me that was always running around in a major metropolitan area, I learned a lot of str street stuff and street smarts and kind of a spidey sense that I don't think any of these kids when I go to the suburbs have or had. I was able to analyze people and see which direction they may take. I've been fooled before too. Overall, you learn a different type of trait and a different type of respect for different types of individuals. You don't get that with these blinded kids that are always pampered, that live in these safe neighborhoods and so forth. So especially raising boys, 
uh, those boys need to have that reality of what happens in the real world in in the downtown metro area. That's a different area. So with those skill sets, they're not taught at universities. And in fact, universities, in my opinion, don't teach what's necessary nowadays anyway, which is tax management, business management. Uh, maybe there are ethics classes and so forth. But what they do have an opportunity of doing if you do end up going is you get connected to this group of individuals and especially if you network you can be part of the next big thing the next facebook whatsapp uh, company that goes public you learn a skill set so skill sets such as computer science are very important that would be my preferred um, uh, level of education that i would personally uh, bring myself into because that's the future robotics ai computer science technology that's where all the big millionaires are coming out of and that's all the money they're making having a business background is nice but having the ability to create an app that could scale or do things which i always have in my mind but not have that right partner that knows that stuff is frustrating so i i can learn business sense in a year to two years but i cannot uh basically um create an app or code an app because I don't know that stuff and it's like a third language to me, okay? So overall, universities and colleges are not absolutely necessary if you wanna be successful or if you wanna be an entrepreneur, you could take myself an example. And there are famous people that have also dropped out and have made big companies. And of all the college dropouts, I mean, you got some big names here, okay? You got Mark Zuckerberg, you got Steve Jobs, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, James Cameron, Kanye West. Congrats, Kanye West. I think he just became a multi-billionaire with, with his Yeezy brand. I think he's the richest black person in America now. Congrats to him. He's a college dropout. That's a proven thing. And even Elon Musk, who I mentioned many times on my channel, says that he did not go to Harvard, but the people that work for him do. So it's not a necessity to be successful. What you got to understand is, you could have a degree in college. You could get through college and not learn anything. You could not do anything with your degree. So you have to weigh the options. Do you wanna have a hundred to $200,000 debt or do you wanna go ahead and start a business and, and push yourself and continue working? And there are people in college that graduate that do nothing with their life and don't make a lot of money. It's all about will and, will and motivation, determination, planning, and you gotta push yourself to that limit every day to make sure that you're making the money that you wanna be making or you have the lifestyle that you wanna have. That's my college story. I have been asked, is college necessary? Where did I go to school? And again, the answer is I did not go to a four-year university. I did go to community college. And do I regret it? Sometimes I do. Overall, I don't, um, you know, I feel like the one thing I lack is that expertise and uh, the collaboration that I could have with individuals from that school uh, that could have made one of my companies bigger or we would have created a company that would have been bigger because of their skill sets. So I hope you like this video. Don't pressure yourself to go to school. If you don't go get into that one school that you've really been pushing for or that one college you really love, it's not the end of the world you'll still do a lot better as long as you're determined to do better. That's more important, practice that and focus on that. You could kill it in multiple directions. There are multiple businesses making multiple millions of dollars, if not billions, and you just gotta push yourself towards that direction. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button for me and subscribe to my channel. As always, I appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys here in the next video.